All right. Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's an Amber thing. I am Amber. So I tried to get myself into a quiet place. You're seeing like my ironing board and <laughs> all these things in my room, trying to hide Christmas presents, stuff like that. Let me see if I can get in here. Let me see if I can get into this live feed from my phone. Sorry this is happening so late, but I promised it, so. So. Whatever your expenses are to the nearest dollar that you can. So I wanted to hop on. Who's with me? And can you tell me if the volume is okay? So I can adjust it if it's not. So I had done a short, well, I guess it wasn't that short. It was like a 20 minute video earlier. And I ended up, this is so bad. Like I have the setup so crappy. Um, I, um, I ended up taking it down because I watched it and I was a little bit annoyed with the boys and I felt really bad, like kind of like how I was talking to them. So I was like, it's not something I wanna, I'm not proud of that. So, I mean, I wasn't horrible or anything, but I was just irritated and I just don't, I just don't like to be that way. Hey, 007, how are you? Oh, good. So I hopped on earlier and I was talking a little bit about um, some of the things that I have been noticing with the ex Jehovah's Witnesses and some of the groups out there and just kind of like how, and I'm just going to say we, I'm involved in it too. It happens to me too. I find myself like, you know, feeling irritated with some things or, or, um, I'm not so much the kind of person that I, it, like, I need you to agree with me on everything, but I think that there's a lot of, um, ex Jehovah's Witnesses that kind of need that buy-in. And, um, so I was talking a little bit about how, um, we as, ex Jehovah's Witnesses have a lot of healing to do um, with regards to how we treat one another. I think that um, we, coming from this cult where we were never really able to think for ourselves, um, we always were told what to think and when we would go out into the ministry or we were also very safeguarded um, as far as uh, what we were allowed to take in. And I think that has a lot to do with what I'm seeing in the communities as far as um, where people are very argumentative and they really want you to like buy into whatever it is that they're, they're talking about. I've just been noticing that, you know, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of disagreement taking place and people like outright like coming for you, <laughs> going for the jugular <laughs> when you don't agree with what they're saying. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, us um, being witnesses and not having any other choice but to buy into and agree with what we were taught in the organization. So that was a little bit about, you know, kind of what I was talking about earlier, what I had on the video. And then I was also, um, had started to try and talk a little bit about this, um, there's a new, I don't know how new it is. I just came across it uh, the other day. And, but it's like an A&E show. And it's not the one with um, Leah Remney. It's another one. It's like cult, cults and extreme belief systems or something like that. And um, I came across that and I kind of started watching it. I was like binge watching some of it yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day? I don't know, a couple days ago. And um, the very first um, cult that they were talking about was this Nexivim. I think that's what it's called. And I was like blown away by some of the things that they were talking about on, you know, with regards to this organization. Has anybody heard of this Nexivim organization? I think it's like kind of under fire right now. And I think that the, the cult leader is in jail. I'm not sure if he's still in jail or if that was just at the time of filming or what it was, but they, it is, it's intense. I was like, wow, 
Like I thought that, you know, the things that we went through were pretty intense and I'm not going to take anything away from it because as Jehovah's Witnesses, we definitely went through some very intense, <laughs> intense, uh, things. Um, but this, this next event thing, I guess there's like one, one leader, I don't remember his name. And then like, maybe like his, somebody that helps him like bring people into the cult and it's a woman and um i want to say that the cult is more like not so much a religious but like a corporation type of well so is the so are the Jehovah's witnesses right a corporation but it's more of like a, a business almost like i want to say um like a pyramid type business thing but um they were talking about how you know you get into this and you get all on fire for you know the, the these systems that are helping you to like kind of break through like your fears and and exceed in life and you're like all about it and it's like you know super amazing and then it kind of breaks off into some other like there are some other portions of this cult that are very sexual in nature um, where I guess the leader of this cult is, um, basically, uh, picking and choosing, you know, who he wants out of this organization of his, and then like takes them onto it, like another level or another like shoot off of their corporation where, um, it's like very, a very sexual thing. And, um, they were talking about how one, one woman was telling her story, about how um, she was approached by, I wish I remembered the names. She was approached by the female counterpart for this organization and, um, you know, how they ended up, I guess they had her, like, write some kind of, like, really damning letter um, where she, like, puts, or and does a video as well where she, like, puts down um, or, or, I don't know if she's putting, well, her family members, like everybody in her family, she was required to say something like very terrible about them on this video and then writes a letter as well. And then some photos or something that they had to take so that they have like something on you um, so that you kind of stick with it. And so that it, re it makes you keep everything that's happening within this cult a secret because you don't want for your video to come out or you don't want anybody to see this letter or these like photos of you or whatever it is. Um, and she was talking about it saying like how she was saying, you know, like in, in her mind, she was thinking like, no, 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 I, sh I shouldn't be doing this. But then, you know, it was like part of this organization where, you know, she was being encouraged, you know, to do what she was doing and, and she felt good about the encouragement. She said there was like such a, like a cognitive dissonance that was taking place there because like she was feeling internally, like she shouldn't be doing some of these things that she's doing and that it was going to lead to something horrible. But yet the kudos that she was getting for doing it made her want to do it more. So she was talking about how, and let me jump on and see what's going on in here. Hi, Shauna. Let's see. Not jaw witness. Hey, welcome. So, um, she was, they were, they went into a little bit more detail about, you know, like some of the things that they had to do. And one of the things that they were having to do was to get branded. So it was like a really strange symbol on this brand that they do, you know, like right, you know, close to your private parts, you know, down low. And, um, after they had like really kind of looked at it and examined it, it was the cult leader's initials. If you turned it one way and then his like sidekick, it was her initials. If you turned it another way. And I was just thinking to myself, wow, I don't know, like to, to allow somebody to put a brand on you. Like, I don't know. I don't even understand how, I mean, but then again, there's probably people that look at me and go, you were a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> you know, you went with this kind of stuff. You know, not that kind of stuff, but our own stuff. Um, and, and didn't think twice about it. But I was really thinking like, wow, like if somebody was asking me to like, you know, make a video and talk shit about my family and, 
And then knowing that they're going to hold this over my head in order for me to keep secrets, I'd probably fucking run. But then again, I don't know. I guess she was saying, you know, that it's really interesting. If you guys get a chance, um, I think you can probably, you know, get it like on demand or something like that. But it is an A&E show and it's called, I think it's called like Cults and Extreme, Extreme Religion, something like that. Um, so then the very next video that came up was Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was like, oh, let me listen here. And it really started talking about um, the, the sexual molestations that are taking place. And um, I guess this part had really not crossed my mind because I have never been involved in the ministry in the prisons. And that was what they were talking about was how, I'm kind of getting warm in here, um, the, the prison ministry that the Jehovah's Witnesses participate in, um, how they're bringing some of these child molesters into the organization is through their prison ministry. Uh, they were talking about how, like, you know, one of the prisons that they had visited, and I don't remember if they had said the name or not, but they were saying that, 100% of the people that would study with the witnesses were child molesters. And, and not in every prison, but in this one prison that they were talking about. 100% um, of the Bible studies were child molesters. So if you stop and think about that, it's really scary to me. And I feel like I wish there was something that we could, I wish there was something we could do to kind of help people to see this stuff, but they're bringing these people into the organization. And, you know, I remember at times, um, there being like some talk about, you know, somebody who was in prison that was by that had a Bible study and, you know, how wonderful they were doing. And then they become becoming baptized and never really knowing like why they were in prison or what had happened with that person. But, just knowing that they had overcome whatever it was through their Bible studies. And it really kind of like stopped and made me think about, you know, those people that, and I think it is more like the servants, the ministerial servants and the elders that are going and doing the prison ministry. If I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that that's kind of more how it goes. Um, and... Cloud Queen says, I'm not next Jehovah's Witness, but I grew up hating myself because my mom was a devout Southern Baptist. There are a lot of similarities. Hey, Raza. So, um, what was I? So, so you know, the, they're bringing these, these child molesters into the kingdom halls with all of the brothers and sisters and their children and everybody's so, you know, trying to be accepting of, you know, these people that are coming in, not having a single clue that they're sitting next to a child molester, that, you know, their child is in the congregation with the, with the child molester. And all the while, the person who is, you know, handling the Bible study is pretty much just overlooking the fact that it's like they're they're giving them a pass or or they're saying that they have been reformed or something because they've had a bible study which i think it really takes a whole hell of a lot more than a bible study with a jehovah's witness to reform a child molester and i really feel like it's so not their place to make that decision of whether or not they're they're a reformed child molester because they've had a bible study or because they have agreed to follow the guidelines of the organization by getting baptized is such a slippery slope and such a dangerous dangerous game they're playing with our lives i wish that there was something something that we could do or something that we could say you know that would kind of help in these areas but the truth is is that it's been happening forever and it's going to continue to happen it's it's despicable but I'm going to come over here to this, to this live feed. It is so scary, Shauna. It is so scary to think about, you know, because I, I think that we really, like back when I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, one of the things that I really was like, um, 
that I felt so drawn and I had, you know, grown up in it. So I was already drawn to the organization thinking it was, you know, the truth, the only truth out there. So after I, you know, had left and then did my own thing for a while and came back, you know, to me, I was always like, it's the truth and it's a, a safe place. Never once did it ever cross my mind that it wasn't a safe place. I even remember thinking to myself, like, you know, we could go to an assembly at the convention and leave our purse, you know, on, on the seat and rest assured that nothing was going to be stolen because we were among, amongst our brothers and sisters and we were safe. Everything was safe there. That's the mentality that, that Jehovah's Witnesses have, that they're safe amongst their brothers and sisters. And in actuality, they're in... A lot of danger and their children are in so much danger let's see I don't I don't know a whole lot about the Southern Baptist organization although I have I was after um, being a Jehovah's Witness I was uh, involved with a Baptist organization here um, in Fresno, but it was, I think it, it was a really small type of um, independent um, Baptist church. So I don't know if it was the same. I felt like it was a lot different than um, my Jehovah's Witness upbringing. And that's kind of why I was drawn to it because I really wanted like to have I, I wanted to have like God in my life. I wanted to have some kind of like you know, spiritual structure. So I was drawn to it, but I didn't last, I didn't last long there. I kind of grew out of like feeling like I needed to be a part of church. But I'm curious about how the Southern Baptists, um, what their similarities are to the witness organization. Shauna says, it's so sad that there are those who know what it is or what is going on and look the other way, especially when they have children. I know I'm in the same boat. I feel so like, I just don't get it. Like, and I guess I've said this quite a few times before and I just continue to not get it. But how can you see everything that's going on in the news and have people that are, you know, trying to open your eyes and just stay so dead asleep about the things that are going on. It's just, it blows my mind. Hi, Michael. So, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I guess I don't really have a whole lot to say. I get really very overwhelmed with the thoughts of all of this stuff that goes on because, you know, as someone who used to sit in you know the congregation meetings with my own children um and, and you know a part of a congregation with many many children it just saddens me to my very core to know that there are so so many children who have experienced so many things that you know i can't save them from let's see i see people talking Really? Raza says, if you stop them at the carts, every one of them claim that they haven't seen it on the news. That's insane to me. I, I wish, man, and I wanted to ask you guys too. Um, I really have been wanting to do like a line of maybe t-shirts and sweatshirts, things like that, but not just like something that says like down with the tower or you know that kind of a thing i really want to create something that we could where we're not having <laughs> we're not having to talk to anybody but where we're able to like have something printed on them that makes somebody think or make something somebody like look a little bit deeper into a subject that could possibly open their eyes and wake them up so if you guys have any ideas about, you know, like some quotes or some sayings or, you know, something that we could do in that, um, in that capacity, please share it with me because 
I've just kind of been like spinning on the thought. I was talking to Marvin about it a little bit from um, I am MKT. Um, I was asking him a little bit about, you know, that and some ideas that we could possibly like, you know, throw onto some t-shirts or, you know, something like that that we could wear where we're not really having to go up and interact with the witnesses because a lot of times it's just so disappointing. It's so disappointing, you know, to see their level of uh, just blindness to all of the stuff that's going on. But maybe if they were to, I don't know, catch a glimpse of something that kind of piqued their interest that maybe they could look a little deeper into on their own without us having to say something would, would be neat. Um, you have an apparel line? Yes, I would love to collab with you. I would because I really I want to be able to do something. I just want to, I just want to do something. I want to do something that's going to be helpful. I want some. I want to have a part in some people waking up. You know, it's whatever we can possibly do to to help others from going in that direction, or you know, possibly just to wake them up. Yeah, the generation that will not die. That is that is a good one. I wonder what we could do. Like, how could we, how could we, like, if we had that on a quote, then what would we, what point of reference could we give? You know, what, what point of reference could we give on there that could help them to open their eyes or give them a place to go to look at something? I don't even know if they would. <clears throat> I remember, uh, not not jaw witnesses. I remember thinking I would never grow old. Like we would, we would be the the generation that would live through the end and just be young forever. That's how many. Yeah, I used. To, I remember thinking that as well. I remember being told that. I remember being told, you know, like that we were. <laughs> We're always in the last days that we're in the last days and it's it could be any time now and it's so important to make every single meeting because one of these meetings they may announce where we're gonna have to go underground and you know we won't be able to worship in the kingdom halls anymore and it's so so important you know uh, it's such a it was I remember always being so afraid you know so afraid to do the wrong thing or so afraid you know that I was going to bring reproach on Jehovah because if I brought reproach on Jehovah then I wasn't going to receive everlasting life with my family isn't that sad is that it's so sad I remember thinking that I remember and another um thing that they were talking about on this uh program was just and it really made me kind of think and remember, you know, my childhood when they were talking about like the literature um, that you go to school with, you know, let, that your parents go to school with in the very beginning of the year and it would happen every year and how, you know, you're just so separate from everybody and everything and how so detrimental it is to you as a child and growing up. Like I remember not being able to even be in the stinking classroom. If there was going to be a birthday, I would have to be sent to the library so that I could sit and fucking read. I mean, do a study. I don't know. It's it's so sad. Um, <laughs> I remember what was that brochure called? Why can't I remember what that brochure was called? But I remember it was like especially for school and having to go in. And I remember thinking, I wonder if they would call the party a winter party if I would be able to participate instead of having to go to the library. Um, but always being like the odd man out because, you know, I was, they, they made you separate yourself. It wasn't like you could have a normal childhood. Yep. Raza says those tactics are just the scare factor to keep sheep in their place. Those damn sheep. <laughs> How did I not ever realize that it wasn't a good thing to be a sheep? <laughs> That's just like follow, follow, follow. Don't think for yourself. You all go in the same direction. Follow, follow, follow. Michael says, exactly the belief that we're immortal is so powerful. It took me a while to accept the fact that I am not. Yep. The flock. The flock. Yep. Let's see. Am I, what have, have I missed anything?
So, you know, I was watching one of um, Daro's video, and I didn't watch the whole thing. I, I can never stomach a whole video of Daro's. But I was watching one of his, uh, skipping kind of through it just to, because he talks about me sometimes. <laughs> so I just want to hear what he has to say. So um, he was talking about, he was being really mean about some some of the other extra Jehovah's Witnesses. And he was um, saying something about the fact that, or he, he says that the Jehovah's Witness organization is not a cult because... Um, a cult has only one leader and only 5,000 members. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, well, how did this organization start? There was one leader. His name was Charles Taze Russell. <laughs> and it probably started out with about 5,000 people. <laughs> and it just happened to grow from there. And they happened to switch it over from one leader to a fucking governing body because it's a corporation. And who runs a corporation? A governing body. But Samsung, Samsung. It is. Did you get a chance to see? I was um, I was supposed to get on and do live feed earlier. Shauna says, I'm, I'm just responding without saying it. Shauna says, I bet it's so refreshing to spend the holidays with your children and actually celebrate. It is. Um, we were. I was supposed to get on and do this live feed a little earlier, like probably around 7 or so. And um, I went to take the kids to get something to eat. And they were having a Christmas parade um, in Old Town Clovis. So we went ahead and we went to watch that. And it was just so cute because the, the boys get so excited about it. And, you know, we're all sitting there and, and the parade. If you guys, any of you guys have me on Facebook, it's on my, my Facebook. But um, they're like yelling and they're like waving and, and yelling, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Christmas and they get so excited about it and I just and I do I think to myself sometimes like those are some things that I really missed out as a child like being able to be a child and you know have fun and the freedom of you know not having to worry about the fact that if I didn't preach to my friend that they were going to die in Armageddon like my children don't think like that and I'm so grateful Thank you, Shauna. It makes me happy too. It makes just makes me happy for the boys because I feel like there was so much that was taken from me as a child. So much, so much that I never even knew. And, and you know, things that I'm still trying to overcome at this point, like just even trying to, to reconnect myself or to connect myself with enjoying these holidays. I enjoy them because I enjoy my children, but the enjoyment for me is very different because I'm so very disconnected because I never had these things growing up. I don't have these memories of being able to go to parades and yell, Merry Christmas, and just, you know, see the lights and, and participate in all of these, you know, different things that the children get to, to part, ugh, get to participate in now. It's really, it's really very lovely for me to be able to watch them have this in their life and for them to be able to have a birthday, <laughs> be able to be celebrated. I mean, that was something I could never understand either. It was like, why can't, I be recognized on my birthday. Isn't it okay for you to be happy that I was born? Like, you know, I, I always thought those kinds of things. Oh, but you can't, we, we can't praise you because then that would take away praise from Jehovah. That's what I was told. So I, I do, I get super excited that my children get to experience these kinds of things. Not Jaw Witness says, um, we were conditioned to have neg negative reactions to anything Christmas. So it's hard to get past that. It really is. Like, I really have a hard time. Like, this year has been a little bit better. I've been really trying to, like, <laughs> work on my, my, my thought process and, you know, just what I'm allowing myself to, to, to think as far as negativity when these holidays come. Like, my very first reaction is, I'm hemorrhaging money and I, it's, there's no stop and, and I have to buy this and I have to buy that. And, and really that's, it's, it's not about all of that. Like just being able to connect with the love that's involved and you know, how excited the children get is, is awesome. But, um, yeah, it is. It's sad that those kinds of things, that those are the kinds of things that, that we were told as we were growing up. I, I just, when I was watching that program, it just, man, it brought back so much, so many memories. I kind of sat there and had a little, like, tearful moment because I was just like, wow, like, 
um, sad, you know, that we weren't able to just get up and go to school and enjoy, you know, the people that surrounded us there and, you know, the things that we were learning or the birthdays that would come or the, the celebratory, you know, times, the holidays and things like that. We were always, you know, taken out and made very separate. So that, that was all, I, I just feel like it's all so damaging, but I do, um, Raza, I would really like to talk to you. I think I'm going to just, I'll hit you up on Facebook now that I have you there. And uh, maybe we can get like a Zoom call or something going at some point and kind of like have a conversation like where we can see each other and we can kind of discuss some of this stuff about the clothing line because I'd really, really like to do something. Like I just don't know what, I just need ideas. I feel like if we were to start <laughs> brainstorming, you know, some, some really positive things can come from it. I just am not content to sit and not do anything, but I don't know what to do. So these are just kind of things that go through my head, but so let's see. So what's going on with everybody? Talk to me a little bit. We're just going to have an open discussion. Tell me what's What's happening? Do you have any questions about anything? Can I help you with anything? Um, let's see. I know it's kind of late. So it's like 10 o'clock here Pacific Standard Time. So I know that um, some of you are on the East Coast and it's very, very late. So... That's awesome. Okay, let's do that. You know what? I'm going to probably just go ahead and end the live feed. I know that it's really late. And um, hey, Raphael, how are you? Um, I'm kind of out of steam. I never thought I would not, not have something to say. <laughs> I always have something to say. Thank you, Shauna. Um let's see was there anything else that i wanted to so i i'm gonna i want to before i go i'll just talk about this one last thing because it has been on my mind a little bit you know but and i think i've said a little bit about some of this stuff before about you know that there's kind of a lot going on within the ex jehovah's witness community and um and um Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Michael, he says he's a first time uncle. His sister had a baby just yesterday. Oh, that is so amazing. Congratulations. Um, there is, have you guys seen X Jehovah, XJW, I think it's XJW Cafe. Um, she's really new to YouTube. It's, um, and I don't think this, I don't think this is her real name. I'm not sure what her name is yet. We did have a conversation and I didn't even ask her what her name was, but she's on my Facebook as Spencer Tyler. And, um, she has just kind of been going through it with some of, um, the ex Jehovah's Witnesses recently. And she has been really highlighting on her channel some of the things that she has been experiencing. Um, some of it was with the watching Watchtower situation. I'm not sure who is or isn't aware of, you know, what has been going on with some of the characters that run that um, group on Facebook. Um, but if you are interested, jog on over to her channel, um, take a listen. I think it's, it, it's everybody, she really has a place um, here in the community and she's really uh, shining a spotlight on some of the um, less than desirable behavior of some of the ex-witnesses. She's been just, go it seems like she's just going through it like from like one person after another, attack after attack after attack. So I really think that she deserves to um, have some support. So if you can, jog over and take a look at her channel, um, see what is going on. I, my little boys just came into the room after I closed my door and didn't lock it like I should have just because of all the interruptions we were having earlier. So that's where you're seeing my eyes are kind of like looking 
the other way. But um, yes, so go ahead and take a look at that. There's, and I'm gonna say this, um, there is a lot that has been going on within the ex Jehovah's Witness community. I just would like to say that, um, let's give each other some grace. Um, we are all coming out of this cult um, from a different, from a different standpoint, Avery, please, what are you doing? What are you doing? I just want to get it there. Okay, can you go around? Um, give each other some grace when it comes to, you know, some of these, some of them don't deserve grace. And, and you'll find a lot of those ones that maybe don't deserve the grace on XJW Cafe. Um, but there are some that, you know, when we're speaking to one another and we're in, we're in these groups and we're conversing, um, let's just keep in mind that we are coming from a place of where we've been emotionally and mentally tormented. And a lot of that comes, you know, is coming out in different ways, shapes, and forms. And I think that for the most part, not all, but for the most part, we are doing our very best to come out and to heal. We still carry a lot of damage with us, whether we like to use the word or not. It is a part of, you know, what's happened to us in this cult. So as, you know, you guys are out there and in these groups, and let's just be cognizant of how we're treating one another. Let's like step out of the space of where we feel like we need to attack. Um, you know, just like we kind of talked about, <laughs> just like we kind of talked about a minute ago, like a lot of that cult mentality, you know, kind of comes through. We were always like, you know, as witnesses, if people didn't agree with us. We were in attack mode and it was something that, you know, was taught to us, but we don't need to be that way anymore. Let's just try and take, like try and think before we speak and not come to each other from a point of attack. Understand and realize that we're all very, very different human beings. And now that we're allowed to express how different we are, let's appreciate the differences between us. And let's continue to try and grow and to gracefully agree to disagree when the time is necessary and not to be so, you know, adamant about, you know, what you think and whether or not it's correct. We all have our own perceptions of the very same things. You know, we'll see the same thing and have a very different take on it. And we really allow ourselves a lot of growth when we can allow somebody else to speak from their point of view, take it in. And even if we don't agree with it, we don't argue about it. Let's just rise above that shit. Um, and I, I am going to do my very best to get back on and to talk with you guys very soon. Um, yeah, X, oh yeah, XJ Dub Cafe. Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on and, you know, I just, I, I really try and stay out of all of that stuff. There's so, I have a very few people that like I really connect with. And um, as far as like other YouTubers, um, I'm not one of the super popular ones. So I'm not like all up in the mix. And I kind of like it like that. I kind of just like, you know, keeping to myself because I do not want to get caught up in a shit storm. But I just think that I want to just, to say that, you know, like let's treat each other with love and respect. And even in the times when we're not in agreement with specific things, it's okay. It's okay to agree to disagree. Like you don't have to agree with me all the time. I don't have to agree with you. We can still be great allies. <laughs> um, all right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you go. Let's see. It's already been almost 40 minutes. Man, I didn't even think it had been that long. But um, I've enjoyed this time with you, and I can't wait to speak to you again. Until next time. If you haven't already, please subscribe. 
Um, if this video has helped you in any way, shape, or form, or any of my other videos have helped you in any way, shape, or form, please share them with others because that is my main concern is being able to get my story out there or to, you know, my views and thoughts, maybe to help somebody else. So I've enjoyed this time and I will talk to you all again soon. Talk to you later. Bye.